Splatoon 3's story mode got a lot of attention during the first few weeks of the game's life. Some of us were busy doing the absolute most to avoid spoilers, while others blasted through the entire thing on the first day. But by the time October rolled around a month later, it was like everyone had already forgotten about it. Well, not on my watch. <laughs> I put out a poll both to the community group on Twitter and to my own community right here on YouTube asking people to rate Splatoon 3's story mode out of 5. I have the results and I can now reveal that Return of the Mammalians scored an average of, drumroll please, 4 out of 5 stars. Now although it averaged a 4 out of 5, that doesn't mean everyone had the same opinions on it. For example, one of the comments I got said I liked it but I didn't like how the ending seemed rushed. While another stated pretty much the opposite, saying I felt like only the final boss was exciting. I spent most of the game trying to skip as much as I could because the levels were so easy it felt tedious. I also received a few comments back explaining that the reason for 4 stars rather than the full 5 was that while they thought Return of the Mammalians was good, Platoon 2's Opto expansion was better. However, these are just a few select opinions and while you might agree with some, you may also disagree with others. So before we get into my thoughts, I'd love to know yours so don't forget to drop your opinions on the story mode in the comments. And now without further ado, here's a rundown of exactly what I thought about the Splatoon 3 story mode. Pretty standard first level stuff but look at little buddy do his little dancey dance. Okay, does anyone else get caught out by octopods? I always think I have more time to shoot them when they're close to me but then they go boom and I go ow. Come on man! That's too easy! Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. The first time I played this level, I got lost. Like, I'm not kidding, I ended this level the first time round with like a time of 10 minutes or something, all because I kept missing that one wall you need to swim up to get to the next checkpoint. To make it worse, I played this level again about a month later because I was looking at my times and the 10 minutes stood out like a sore thumb, and guess what? Your girl got lost again. I mean, I still cut my time down by like half, but I never claim to be good with directions anyway. I get such chill vibes from this level, like nothing's trying to kill me, I have no time limit, I'm just peacefully doing my 3D color. Spider -Man, Spider -Man. Little Buddy was the best thing they could have added to this single player. Not a joke, just a fact. Can't lie, very surprised I got this one first time. Octo expansion flashbacks. If you know, you know. Also, I know this isn't a level, but I really just had to mention how much I love this whole first interaction with Deep Cut. I am in Spain without the A. You're in spin? This one was easy, and so was this. Not the best, but definitely not the worst. You know how I said I got lost on that doors level in Sector 1? Well, ironically, yeah, I was fine. Okay, I did this level like three times, not really understanding where I was going wrong before I realised that viewing thing is there for a reason. Turns out, there's a certain inkle you're supposed to hit first. It's a yes from me. As boss fights go, I enjoyed this one. And although Fry is my favourite member of Deep Cut, I still had to squid back her, you know, just for funsies. This level was quick, it was fun, it was easy. So in other words, the complete opposite of everything the corporate ladder actually is. I don't really care for this type of level. Well, 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 would you lucky here? I guess you really can reinvent the wheel. The name of this level is so very specific and I love it. This one is just breaking targets, as is this one, but they're both fun so they get a pass. I know there's only so much you can do differently with this whole avoid the obstacles and ride the rails gimmick, but it felt like I'd already played this exact one level multiple times already. I liked it. The name of this level sounds like someone tried to tell the Nocto Hopper a joke and low Loki got their feelings hurt because the Octo Hopper didn't laugh. Nice run. It's fine, I guess. I'm glad they brought this type of level back because I really liked them in the Octo expansion. I'm also very glad that this version didn't try to make me do it with a blaster. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's just my sanity leaving the building every time I missed one of the boxes and was made to start again. This level's a reminder that GooTuber can actually be fun sometimes. Didn't really find the targets that tricky, to be honest with you. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell you, right, let me tell you <laughs> We don't care. I liked this one. I didn't find it particularly hard, but it was fun. I liked this one too, but I was a little surprised that Splatanas didn't appear more in story mode considering they're one of the new weapon classes. <laughs> Probably my least favourite deep cut fight of the three, but don't get me wrong, it was still a lot of fun. And yes, Shiver got squid bagged, just like Friday. The woman was too stunned to speak. 
Now I don't know about you, but when I hear someone say the word backslide, they're normally not talking about their actual back. So when I saw the name of this level, I thought it was about to take a very different turn. The name of this level is what I say to myself when Splatoon matchmaking inevitably does the Splatoon matchmaking thing, and decides it's going to put two Yeeliters and a Splatterscope all on the same team for no apparent reason other than wanting me to lose and to suffer horribly while doing it. Uh, I can take it or leave it. This level is my favourite in the entire story mode. I don't know why, I think it's because it gives me like spy vibes. I just love the music combined with having to hide from the grillers or while collecting stuff. I don't know, I just, I love it. I recorded the footage for this video like two months ago and I'm gonna be real. Even though I've replayed parts of the story mode since, I had absolutely zero recollection of this level existing. Yeah, they got that right about one way. You know, the name didn't make much sense to me until I missed one of the last stars and got sent all the way back to the beginning. Flashdowns are way more fun when they aren't an immediate death sentence like they were in Splatoon 2. Oh yay, fog, said absolutely no one ever. This level's fine though. This one was pretty easy for the most part, but I was just going around in circles for a bit at the end because I failed to spot the switch on the other side. This level forced me kicking and screaming out of my comfort zone by giving me the option of three weapons that I've probably used the least in the game and have absolutely no real intention to use anytime soon. What's that? Oh, it's the sound of the struggle bus pulling up because I can't lie, this one had me stuck for a bit. I in fact did not learn to reflect, but what I did learn is that the angle shooter and I are not going to be besties anytime soon. If Gold Power Station and the fog waves in Salmon Run had a baby. Found this one pretty easy, but it was still fun. And the same goes for this one. Welcome to me getting lost in levels part I don't even know at this point because I once again missed something that was staring me straight in the face. You know, I really gotta start looking up more. <laughs> This level was supposed to teach you about horizontal and vertical flicks, but I pretty much exclusively used a vertical one. Oops. Took me by surprise initially, but it was easier than I thought. I love how the whole concept of this level is time your movements carefully, and I just decided to not do that. This one was fun, plus I feel like the layout of this level could be really cool for like a Mario Kart track or something. So, fun fact, despite being in a brand new game and one of my main weapons at this point literally having it as a special weapon, my inkjet skills are still terrible and this level is no exception to that. Tentacutes are the most annoying enemy in this game. Like if you don't come here and give me that key I'm going to punt you into the sun you little piece of I had a lot of fun with this one. I love that this is a callback to Super Mario Sunshine and it's probably my favourite of the three deep cut fights. Oh and yeah Big Man got squid bag too because it was only fair at this point. The alternate space station segment was fun. I think it got better after the first section so like from the part where you have to use all the specials onwards. Now as for the final fight itself, I liked both parts of the Mr. Grizz fight a lot more than the one for DJ Octavio in the previous games. I think this is because although it was still a reworked version of hit a certain weak point to kill the boss, it felt harder and a bit more like a challenge so it was far more rewarding to actually finish it. Thus can we take a moment for this cutscene because oh my god the cutscenes in this game. Although one thing I would have liked is if we were able to complete the Mr. Grizz fight, not everything, just the Mr. Grizz fight, with each of the different weapon classes so we could unlock the hero weapons because in Splatoon 3 we do only have the hero shot and I would love to have all of them. So those were my thoughts on the Splatoon 3 story mode. I think I will also give it a 4 out of 5 just because I do think the Octo expansion is 1 better and 2 didn't force me to run around randomly just to get an 100% cleared message. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video why not check out the one on screen now where I did something similar to this but for all the levels in the Octo expansion. And most importantly stay positive stay smiling and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!